When we swing a golf club, we're gonna experience two types of balances. We're gonna experience good balances and bad balances. Most of us that struggle in golf are understanding how our body, or experiencing, I should say, how our body tries to keep itself from falling over versus how our body actually naturally uses movement to keep itself balanced. And knowing the difference is absolutely critical in developing and unlocking your true golf swing. All right, let's start with bad balance, okay? Bad balance is what really inflicts poor golf swings or what makes a golf swing poor or un inefficient, lacking power, speed, uh, consistency and accuracy. It all comes from bad balance. So what is bad balance? Well, bad balance comes from our body's understanding of how to keep itself from falling over. Um, so if a force is applied to our body our body will instinctively try to counter that force by catching itself and locking up, locking up its muscles and trying to make an, an equal and opposite movement, if you will, to keep itself from falling over. Um, very common, uh, here's, a, here's a force that happens uh, that we can do to ourselves. If you're kind of walking and you trip, you will instinctively counter the falling energy with trip by using your muscles and contracting to throw them outwards so you don't fall over. You catch yourself, okay? That is bad balance. Another way to be explained in bad balance, if I walked up to you and I just pushed you, if anybody pushes you, you'll, again, extend out. So if somebody pushed me from the back, I would ex have this, this ex rapid acceleration. My body would instantaneously throw my arms out and kind of put my leg out and I would try to catch myself, to keep myself from falling over. Our body is hardwired to not let our head hit the ground. Now, here's the interesting thing about a golf swing. And it happens in your limbs, but when you pick up a, a object that is not part of you, you very, very likely will start to put a force on it, and it, the force you put on the golf club will put an equal and opposite force back into you. Okay, so anytime you try to use the shaft to control the club head to make it go faster to get it back on path, it creates an imbalance in the body. So let me give you some really common examples here. If I take my golf swing back and I try to pull down on the golf club to get it started, here's what pulling does. The force applied to my arms through my muscles to pull and against the shaft, I naturally tilt myself and stabilize myself. But I try to stop moving for that instance, and then when I actually stop doing that, my, my body can move again, or that I can get the motion going. So anytime you put a pulling force, it gets countered by a kick out force and a tilting force. So your body instinctively uses what I call bad balance, good balance if you don't want your head to hit the ground, but it stops movement, it seizes itself up so you can right yourself and then go back about your business. Uh, same thing, um, off the, one of the most, un, most common imbalances we see in golf is either early extension or standing up. Well, if I put a force on the club early to try to accelerate it, the force works back in me and the stabilization is to move inward toward my line of gravity. So I might have started here, but by the time I try to counter that force and still get it to hit the golf ball, it actually changes my balance. So again, I'm using what I call bad balance to get it done. When you have the intent of hitting the ball with force, you will figure out how to use bad balances to not fall over and still accommodate the task. And of course, that's how we develop what we would call bad swing habits. Now, what's the opposite of bad balance? Well, it's called good balance. Now, we understand bad balance. It's the recovery from forces applied, basically. That's a good way to look at it. So what's good balance? Well, something that your body is very, very good at doing is moving. And motion is always a rotation and a reach simultaneously around your line of gravity. So no matter how you're standing, moving or whatnot, you have a relationship with your center of gravity to the center of earth. And then the way that you distribute your body, you can learn how to move simultaneously such that you can accommodate any task and keep a, keep a balance and actually gain more speed as you do it as well. So I'm just a really simple understanding of kind of getting good balance but versus, versus bad balance. If I want to lean over and pick up this ball, when I first learn, I might fall over like that. So what happens when we learn how to pick up a golf ball out of a hole, for instance? Well, we don't usually do it that way and fall over. We reach and balance. So any bit, any motion that we do 
we figure out a way to counter it at the same time. So no matter what I'm doing, my body seeks to find effortless movement that always stabilizes the movement. And it always has a reach and a rotation. It may be very subtle, but when I'm picking that up, this isn't a linear movement. I'm actually rotating part of my body around as I'm rotating at this fork. That's the way we naturally move around our line of gravity. And that is what we want to take into a golf swing. So what erodes, like in the instance of picking up this golf ball off the ground, what would erode my balance is if I created a force to go down there. But I don't do that. I naturally swing my leg back and my arm back and I find my way of doing that in my balance. And there's a lot of different styles that I could pick that up with, whether I was left-handed or right-handed. But the bottom line is, is my body continues through repetitive practice. It seeks the path of least resistance and it uses good balance to make our movements. And that creates an effortlessness and a weightlessness. So when I apply that back to the golf club, well, my, the, the problem that I'm gonna always have with the golf club is that it is a foreign object to my body. I can't experience good balance until I can get it to be a part of my body. So that's a big part of the learning curve of learning how to swing a golf club. When I start my golf swing, I generally am putting a little bit of a force on it to get going. But once I get in motion, if I'm in motion and I have a really good sense of the intent of my motion, my body should continue to make it better and better and better and, and start to take the restriction out. So when we watch a really good player, why we don't see them stand up on our golf swing, because they're not putting a force on the golf club. They're having, they're more, it's like they're reaching the golf club to pick up the ball at a high level of speed. So as they're rotating around their body and the club is extending, their body is continually finding the best possible way to get that to go faster and to the destination without, without incurring any friction in the body. It takes, it's a certain comfort level that we, de that, we, uh, that we develop. The higher your comfort level is for speed, actually the faster you can make motions without any fear of injury or anything like that. But boy, the moment you put a little force on that golf club, it puts a force back in your body and it seizes you up because your body instinctively will counter, will counter forces so it doesn't fall over. So most golfers are playing with a force applied to the golf club and actually trying to stabilize themselves to not fall over. And that's why their finish positions look really, really weird. So usually when you have a really nice golf motion, you're not doing anything but just letting it go. It's so easy to stay in balance because the motion balanced itself and your body's just good at doing that naturally. But if you keep trying to force the club to go faster, you keep trying to like manipulate the path, your body keeps locking itself up and slowing it down. So you have to learn how to get unrestricted free motion. The next segment of the video, we're gonna talk about how do you develop unrestricted free motion. The best way to develop unrestricted free motion and a sense of good balance is to actually swing the pro. The reason why this works so well in developing a more fluid, naturally balanced motion is that there's a massive component missing that actually really creates most of golfers' struggles. And that's the elimination of the center of mass of the shaft. So if I just hold these things out here inert, the rope hangs down with gravity and the club, I keep it extended. So I'm using a force to keep the club up, but gravity is just pulling this back down. So this only moves, the cylinder only is gonna get in motion when my body's actually in motion itself. So it gives me a very, very different impression of what I'm actually doing with the golf club or what I wanna to intend to do with the golf club. So unrestricted free motion means that I'm able to use good balance all the way through. So even if I put a force on the grip of the pro, it doesn't react in the same way. So it gives me a very, very different impression of motion as it moves around my body, I have to move with it. So what I want this cylinder to do in the context of a golf swing requires that my body figures out some very, very unique balances. So if I set up to try to hit my impact reminder here with my pro, if I try to force it, it actually doesn't get there. So just the intent, just the, the act of trying to use muscle in somewhere else and try to create a force, it actually doesn't work very well. If I understand I'm gonna let it extend to strike for me, then my body starts to find the balances that are natural. So the more I let this thing go and have an intent for it to basically, you know, reach out and touch the ball on the energy that I'm providing through my, through my natural motion, the more my natural motion continues to balance. It continues to feed itself. 
And as you improve with the Pro, you know you're doing it better because it gets straighter and straighter. The angle that forms between the grip and the rope from adding force that would normally give you a really sense of bad balance and trying to keep yourself from falling over, that, become, that goes away. And that allows your body then to learn really naturally, oh, this is the movement that my golf swing does. So when we look back to Tour Pros, and their balances, we just don't see them stand up a lot and 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 have these kind of extra have these kind of extra like you know early extending movements or these funny tilts backwards. There's very it's very minimal, and it's because they're not using the club through the center of mass of the shaft and applying a force that creates that that need to kind of stabilize yourself. Now, when they hit bad shots, a little bit of that shows up. That's what causes the shot to go off to go offline oftentimes. But rather, we see the more natural movement of the whole body together. So it isn't that they're trying to like lead with body parts and transfer energy through body parts or make a, make a force kinetic chain. That chain is just natural because it's natural balance based on the intent of allowing the golf club to accelerate and reach out. As your body learns how to match it naturally, it creates what's called a force couple and allows you to go faster and faster and faster. The more unrestricted you become, the more speed you actually can generate and the more naturally balanced your golf swing gets. That's why at such a high velocity with, uh, with, you know, with, with uh, Tour Pros, they still stick their finish a lot. I mean, it just, it just, it just unleashes with, with an effortlessness and a high speed because they're so comfortable in that kind of free fall balance versus trying to, fall, trying to prevent themselves from falling over. So if you can learn how to develop the intent of good balance in your golf swing and start to learn how to let go of forcing the golf club and forcing it to move through its center of mass, your body then will start to, uh, to unlock itself and then you'll start to discover a more natural swing path, a lot more club head speed. And I always feel the best way to do that is to do that with your pro. All right, we'll see you all next time.